why did I accept to participate on the board of Arts Formation? Oh, well, it was sort of a no-brainer. It's a great privilege for me. It's a great honor um, as an American because uh, it's mainly Europeans on this board. And to be involved in a project about something so important as the digital transformation of Europe and to bring together Europeans and uh, coming at this from a very different angle and have a, an American uh, perspective on that and ethos about the internet, about technology, the arts, and the whole process. It, it really made me feel that it was um, a chance to have a kind of um, dynamic set of discussions in the board um, about all these different things. So I really appreciated to be participating in the project. I learned that Europeans place an incredible burden on their artists compared to Americans. You have you, you have uh, given your artists more prestige and more importance in your societies, I think, than Americans do. But you also want them to solve certain problems. You want them to represent themselves better in terms of policy making. You want them to represent other people whose voices can't be heard. You want your artists to uh, accomplish so many different things. And I think it's, um, it's hard for, for people to do that, but at the same time, it's, it's exciting. It's just a completely different perception of how an artist functions in society and how what, a, a, say, a nation state can expect from, it, from its artists. And uh, I found that that was something that I learned a lot about. So uh, I studied um, how languages, how your the languages that you speak shape the way that you perceive the world and the way that you express uh, yourself in the world and I would say that technologies uh, are extremely important in a very similar way. One of the technologies that Europe has in common that I think is the most exciting is the phonetic alphabet which um, you need to have thousands of years ago you get the phonetic alphabet in around ancient Greece and without the phonetic alphabet you don't have democracy and which is kind of hard to imagine but you need that technology of transmission of language and recording uh, facts or looking up um, stories that people told and have direct access to it in libraries. The only way you can really have a population do that is with a phonetic alphabet because before that you have, say, hieroglyphs, which a priest has to spend a lifetime uh, learning how to interpret and then you go to the priest to get the information or you go to a scribe. So with the alphabet you have this incredible access for individuals to have knowledge and therefore to, to, to vote. So it's really, uh, you can't have democracy without the phonetic alphabet in this context in Europe. And I think we don't even know yet what the internet is going to do. It's a whole new technology, perhaps way more powerful even than the phonetic alphabet. We don't yet know which forms of society or, or governance will, will result from this technology, but it's certainly massive and it's certainly just the beginning of the story. Uh, we've had the alphabet for several thousands of years and we're just the very beginning of the story of this new technology, which will certainly change a lot.